Hey guys, Bill Swart here from Create Effects. Now I've got a great tutorial for you today to show you how to combine rotoscoping and keying together to create a mat. Now we have a lot to get through today, so let's jump into Nuke and let's get started. Okay, so I've got some footage here that I shot recently and what I'd like to do is do a screen replacement. Now obviously we've got some of the challenges of doing the rotoscoping of the character's face and anything that basically goes up in front of the screen. So I'm going to just show you some uh, sort of techniques today to show you how to do that. Uh, we've got some issues like the jug, his hand, his face as it goes over. And uh, what I'll do first of all is I'll just uh, push tab and type in tracker and I'll connect that to the footage. Now what I'll do is just zoom in here and pick a spot where I can track through. So I'm going to track his nostril here. And I'll just make this box a bit smaller. Actually, I'll just take that. So I'm going to be searching for this pattern within the outside box. Okay, what I'll do now is I shall just track that forward. Just going to let that track through now. Okay, once it gets to the end of the range that we need, I'm just going to stop it. And now I'll clear everything forward of that area that we need. So I just left with the tracking data for the area that I need. Okay, which is basically just the area that goes in front of the screen. Now I'm going to do a two point track, so I'm just going to look for another point to track here. And that's just so that I can take the rotation or get some rotation values as well. Okay, I'm just going to track this area here. And once again, I'm just going to track that region again. Okay, now once that is done, I'm just going to check over that. That seems to be fine. I'll now enable both of the transform and rotation. And actually, I'll do scale as well. And what I'm going to do now is just create a roto node. I just pushed O on the keyboard for that. And then within that, I created a folder. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the transform tab of the tracker and the transform tab of the folder that I just created in the roto node. I'm going to shift drag the values down so that these are all the values you can see here. And what that will do is copy all the data from the tracker into that folder. So anything I create in that folder will then use that track movement and move the same way. Okay, let me just clear this out of the way. Okay, so what I'm going to do now uh, with this tracker or with the um, roto node is just find a good frame. Uh, this will probably work and I'm just going to start drawing in my first shape now so I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit and just start to draw out my first shape which is th the nose I'm dealing with at the moment it's always a good tip anyway when you're doing rotoscoping to just break everything up into smaller shapes so you're not dealing with too complicated you know, shapes that are going to change too much. But with the um, shot that we have here, there's not a lot of movement really. The, the character is not moving at all, so this shape won't change drastically anyway. So I'm just going in now and refining the rudder, just moving the tangent handles around and bringing it in slightly. And now I'm just going to finish refining here. And because I've created that shape inside the folder, it, as you can see, it tracks along with the movement from the tracker. So what I'm going to do is highlight it, sort of drag over everything, then control click the anchor point, and I'm just going to move everything with the rotation and also change the scale just to try and keep all the points where they were in the frame before or the keyframe before. Then I can go in and refine the rotor just like this. Just come in now and refine it. 
you just keep working your way around until you can refine everything and obviously the area we're concerned about here is just anything that goes over the screen and once again do the same process just keep going forward you know a couple of frames just see how the movement goes and then keep adding in the keyframes so as you go forward you can see it starts to come a bit away from the face so then once again you do the same thing I just control click the anchor point of all the points move the rotation just to bring them roughly in line and then I'm gonna scale that into roughly the right sort of area and then once again as before you just refine that you just go in and refine some of the points okay so same again you just start going through playing through the sort of area the frame the frames that you're dealing with and just refine it going now and create you know a couple more key frames that you need and then just just gonna go through again and see where it comes comes apart okay there it comes apart now, I know this isn't on the screen but I'm just doing this frame so that the frames between this one and the last one I made the computer will interpolate them a bit more accurately so I'm just going to be you know fairly accurate and then now if I go through the other frames these should be interpolated a lot better than they would have if I didn't change that last frame even though it wasn't really in front of the screen that much okay again I'm just going to refine these just move them into place okay so as I play through now it obviously sits a lot better I'm just gonna move this roughly I mean this frame isn't really important anyway and I'm just gonna put a keyframe just click on the rotor I'm just gonna put a keyframe on the opacity and then go one frame forward and just switch it off because we don't need it there anyway let's just play through that and see how that's working for us okay we might need to add some more keyframes just at the beginning here same thing again I'm just going to control drag the anchor point and rotate all the points this is a good sort of tip when doing roto for anything that you roto is just to move the bigger group of points together because if you start moving single points too drastically the edges of your rotor are going to stop boiling and that's not what you want so if you just try to move as much points together as possible if you do need to move single points try not to move it too much and always try to keep the points in the same sort of place that it was in the other keyframes so for example if you got roto and there's a point on the on someone's elbow make sure that point stays on the elbow okay let me just check through my roto again Okay, that's okay so I'm going to push K to create a copy node I'm just going to copy the alpha channel from the roto into the footage and I'm going to put a pre multiplication node under that and just test the roto I'm just going to put the motion blur on by clicking there And as you see when I play through, you can see how the rotor is looking. And you can just put a blur onto just the alpha channel of your rotor. So just click on the alpha and just give it a sort of, you know, you can go through and test it. But best to just keep this value quite low. Just sort of softens the edge slightly. Along with the motion blur, that should work quite well. So now that will give you just a good overview of how to do the roto. So if you join me in part two, I'll show you how to do some keying to get back some of the hair detail in his beard. And then I'll show you also how to combine that with the roto to get your final mat. So just click here below and join me in part two and I'll see you soon.